all right in this video i want to talk about website bandwidth in general and why it's very essential for every web developer to know about this concept so just know that if you know what website bandwidth is this is going to help you save millions of dollars on your website or any project that you work upon so basically i was looking for an article on website bandwidth and i was scouring through the internet and i came across this netlify blog written by min kim who's a product marketing manager and i must say this article is really really good and it explains so much about website bandwidth and it will just basically make everything you need to know clear so i quickly want to go through this article and help you understand what website bandwidth is and how much of it do you actually need so in short, just know that website bandwidth is nothing but the data that's getting transferred from the server to the client. Alright, so when you open any website, let's say youtube.com or google.com, anything, then the resources that the server sends to the client, such as the images, the JS, the CS, the CSS code and all that. So all that resource combined, whatever data it takes, for example, 3 MB, 5 MB or whatever, that data is nothing but the website bandwidth. So basically the data that's being sent from the server to the client. All right, just keep that in mind. Now, if I go through this article, it says when evaluating different web hosts for your web, for your domain, an important criteria to consider is the amount of bandwidth needed to support your site. Website bandwidth can be defined as the amount of data from a site that can be transferred from the server to the user. All right, for example, if a site has dozens of images and text that equals three megabytes or three MB and 100 people visit the page, then the website would consume 300 MB of bandwidth. That makes sense, right? So if all the text, images, JSS, CSS, videos as well, if everything combined is equivalent to 3 MB, so let's say when I hit any website and all of that data, which is the text images and all of that combined is 3 MB, then that means for one user, the data being transferred from server to client is 3 MB. So for 100 users, for 100 different people visiting that website, the bandwidth would be nothing but 100 into 3, which is 300 megabytes of bandwidth. So now assume that the bandwidth allocated for your site is capped at 600 MB. So basically allowing 200 people to access the site. So all this is saying is, let's say when you deploy, then you have set up some settings where the maximum bandwidth your website should cross is not more than 600 MB, which means only 200 people can access the site, considering the website bandwidth is 3 megabytes. All right. So just consider that the website bandwidth cannot be exceeded more than 600 MB, which you have put as a setting on your website for monetary concerns. So once traffic exceeds that allotment, so let's say once traffic exceeds more than 200 people, which means more than 600 MB is going to be consumed. So once traffic exceeds that allotment, attracting hundreds and even thousands of people, two things can occur. Visitors will likely experience longer load times and the website could even crash or the hosting provider could bill average fees of X dollars per 100 GB to cover up the surplus traffic. So once the cap you have set is exceeded and or the number of users visiting your website becomes more than 200 based on whatever you have set, then because your bandwidth is capped at 600 MB, it's not your website is not going to handle any more requests. So when a new user visits your website, they are pretty much gonna experience a longer load time because the server has to wait for another particular user to leave your website so that there's room for a new user to come visit your website so once an existing user leaves the website then the loading time ends and the new user gets to access the website so either you could experience long load times and the website could even crash or the hosting provider could bill you x dollars per 100 gb so this is also a big risk because let's say you're sleeping and you're not monitoring things actively then if the number of users keep increasing then you keep getting charged per 100 gb and this could amount to a huge number causing you to lose a lot of money all right so you gotta be careful in these scenarios so in the first scenario where visitors experience longer load times an extra second in load time typically costs five percent in conversion rate according to this article over here now in the second scenario where you incur fees for every 100 gb over the agreed threshold it is crucial to surface the expected bandwidth usage before committing to a plan to minimize cost so it's essential to know how much bandwidth your website will generally take so that you can cap your bandwidth accordingly so that you're not charged infinitely on and on again. All right. So this is why it's important to know everything about website bandwidth, because once you know the data or the amount of data that's being transferred for your website from server to client, then you can calculate that and then you can decide what plan to take for your hosting provider. So once you know the, num the average number of users visiting your website, the data per user that gets transferred, then you can accordingly select a plan that is adequate for your use case. 
and that will ensure that you're not paying anything extra by taking a different or a larger plan and this will also allow you as a developer to make sure that the resources that's being transferred from the server to client are cached or minimized as much as possible so that the data that's being transferred is less allowing lesser cost to be incurred so let's dive further into this how much bandwidth do i need for my website well to calculate bandwidth usage you must identify the following the page weight which is the total number of bytes of a particular web page the average page views per day and the downloadable content your site offers if relevant so there is a formula to calculate the website bandwidth and for that you need three things which is the page weight which is nothing but the total data of your web page uh, the total data that the server sends to the client and then nothing but the number of page views per day so the number of people visiting or not just the number of people but the page views itself because a single person can also visit your page multiple times right but if you have your data cached it won't matter much because you won't be taking data from the server over and over again but still the page weight average page views per day and downloadable content your site offers if relevant so if there's any videos or image or any sort of resource that your website allows to download then once a user downloads it from your site that is also going to incur some bandwidth right that is also going to consume some bandwidth right because that's also data being transferred and downloaded so that's also important for website bandwidth now let's go further in the example above the hypothetical page weight was 3 mb but depending on the html css javascript and images or other types of media used your page weight can vary drastically all right now one way to calculate the page weight is to use the developer tools of your browser in chrome you can access developer tools uh, click on the network tab and toggle disable cache to see the amount of data transferred which signals the page weight so basically in the network tab if, if i inspect anywhere like if i click on inspect and basically if i go to the network tab over here then this is where we can see the data being transferred from the server to the client all right so if i disable the cache and then if i refresh the page well here you can see right now when i refresh the page and land here 3.4 mb of data has already been transferred to this website so me as a user as one user is already using 3.4 mb of data all right so that is my page weight now if i scroll down then there is a possibility that this might also increase because if more data is there underneath which hasn't been loaded that could load up and also increase this data that happens in youtube don't worry we'll see about that soon so if i cross this um so for instance the page weight for youtube.com which is 1.9 mb is much larger than the page weight for google.com which is 588 kb since youtube serves much more dynamic content to visitors of course youtube in their home page has different thumbnails videos and whatnot so of course as compared to just the random play in google.com youtube.com is going to consume more bandwidth or it's going to have a larger page weight which means more data being sent from the server to the client because it has a lot of images right so simpler tools such as pingdom.com can also be used to determine the page weight okay so here you can see when this person opens youtube and the disable cache is enabled 1.9 mb of data has been transferred and in youtube do note that as you scroll down this data over here keeps on increasing because as you scroll down there is lazy loading that occurs and more images get loaded accordingly which means more data is being transferred from the server to the client which means larger the page weight and for google.com you can see this is just a plain simple page so the data being transferred is only 588 kb now just to show you this if i go to youtube i click on home and let's say if i open the inspect and i click on network and if i refresh this you can see at the moment i have 1.5 mb data being transferred now if i scroll down there you go you can see this keeps on increasing just pay attention here you see the page weight keeps increasing because dynamically more data is being loaded all right so now if i close this and if you go down now once the page weight is calculated which is nothing but this part over here use any analytics tool of your choice to find traffic metrics and multiply the average page views per day by page weight so as i said uh, so as the article said above to find the bandwidth to calculate the bandwidth we need page weight average page views per day and downloadable content your site offers so page weight we figured out which is nothing but this part over here then to get the average page views of course you can go to google analytics or any traffic metrics website where you can get the average page views per day for your website so and then once you've gotten that you just multiply the page views the average page views with the page weight of your website 
Then after that, lastly, if your website also serves downloadable content to visitors, multiply the average downloads per day by average by average file size and add the result to the previous number, which is nothing but page views into page weight. All right. So if you have any downloadable content, you should know the file size of the downloadable content and the average number of downloads that occur per day. So the average number of downloads multiplied by the average file size plus the page views multiplied by the page weight. You can see over here bandwidth requirement is equal to average daily page views into page size plus average downloads per day into average file size. That is if you have any downloadable content and then you take the addition of both of this and multiply it with 30 into 1.5 30 because you'll get the bandwidth for the entire month and 1.5 because as as it says here the last digit 1.5 is a redundant factor to account for unusual traffic spikes to your site because we are taking the average amount right but sometimes in some days the number could vary a lot so this 1.5 is just going to give you a more better approximation so the recommended value is 1.5 is between 1.5 and 2 all right so for example a b2b marketing consulting site that averages 500 daily visitors and 50 daily downloads would require a bandwidth of 51750 mb or 51.75 gb well that's because if it's averaging 500 daily visitors so 500 daily page views and let's say the page weight or the page size is nothing but 2 mb so 500 into 2 mb plus 50 average downloads per day into 3 MB which is nothing but the file size of that individual download so these two added multiplied by 30 into 1.5 which is nothing but 51.75 GB so that's how you calculate the bandwidth for your website so of course for e-commerce and B2B websites that attract thousands of visitors daily bandwidth could easily surpass 1 TB all right so how to optimize for bandwidth usage the most impactful method to optimize for bandwidth usage is to reduce your page weight that can be achieved in several ways so of course the data being transferred from the server to the client if we somehow do some performance improvement and reduce the page weight basically the size of the resources then there's going to be less data being transferred or less page weight which means the overall website bandwidth is also going to reduce so here's a comprehensive way of how to reduce your site's bandwidth usage without reducing traffic but in summary you could consider the following recommendations image optimizations of course the images which are being sent image without a doubt uses the most amount of resources while a page loads although netlify provides an image optimization feature for lossless compressions so basically it says that netlify can help you reduce the size of your image without losing the quality so although netlify does that you may still need to manually alter animations and image types to reduce resource consumption all right so basically you can use webp format images and all instead of jpeg and png because webp definitely is low is lesser in size so that could contribute to lesser bandwidth so image optimizations is one then there's cache settings which is nothing but changing fewer files per build usually means that browser-based caches can cache more effectively reducing bandwidth usage so this just means that you can cache a lot of your data in the browser itself so that next time the user enters the same page again they don't have to download all that image and all from the server it can just directly take it from the browser itself so you can store files images and all that in the browser by enabling the browser-based cache and to do that in the api calls you can implement cache control methods increase the expiry time of the cache to be stored in the browser and all that so once you do that you can effectively cache your files reducing bandwidth usage apart from that there's also lazy loading images which is rather than loading all images and media types up front directing visitors to load items only when they interact with them could optimize for bandwidth so as you saw in the youtube.com example as i kept scrolling the bandwidth kept on increasing that is pretty much like lazy loading itself because you don't load up all the data right away you load it as and when when the user scrolls down and reveals more content so that's when the rest of the data is loaded to the user so you're not getting a huge amount of data upfront you only get it as and when you scroll down which also optimizes for bandwidth then there is monitoring optimization so synthetic and real user monitoring test types can perform full page loads at high frequencies which can quickly consume huge amounts of data so this part over here all it says is that there are certain monitoring tools that you use for your website to check if your website is functioning at the at a given moment so these monitoring tools what they would generally do is to test that if your website is working they would directly do a full page load of your website which would 
load up all the resources in your website and that would ultimately consume a lot of bandwidth right because just to monitor and test if your website is functioning you are running the entire website doing a full page load loading all the resources ultimately increasing the website bandwidth unnecessarily so what they're recommending is instead of loading the full page what you can do is for such cases you can use a small lightweight file called status.txt that contains the text okay which when you actually load your website and if the status.txt actually returns this text then that means that your page is actually functioning so rather than checking it on your website's resources by doing a full page load in certain scenarios to just monitor if your website is healthy right now or it's functioning you can simply have a status.txt file that resides on the server and you can use a small lightweight file to check if your website is actually functioning like all this will do is it will just hit the server and check if there is a status.txt file coming for this domain and if it has the text okay if yes then that means this server is healthy and that it's functioning properly and this is much better than doing a full page load and loading up so many resources all right so all this part is not necessary this is pretty much where the article ends so this is pretty much all about what is website bandwidth and how much do you need so if you did understand this article correctly and if you implement things written over here for your own website in the right manner then you can literally end up saving millions of dollars for your own particular website or project so these things are extremely essential for you to know as a developer so with that that's all for this video and if you found it insightful then don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more